Digital media teachers live on an island. You know, you don't go to college, get a major in how to be a digital media educator. Digital media lends itself so well to the student engagement factor where kids take on the things that they love. They start to figure out that my skills can contribute to the greater good of the we. What are some of the skills these students are learning that really prepare them for going into the workplace? Is they have a hard time communicating their needs and their wants. They don't want to bother an adult. I didn't do anything. She had the knowledge. She had the learning. I just didn't. I wanted to remove the barrier of the fear. Hey everyone, welcome back to another interview with a great educator. We are joined today by Shanda Hall, who's taught at Schuyler Community Schools for 27 years. She is one of the first educators and schools we worked with because she immediately saw the impact that student broadcasting can have in helping students learn to communicate, collaborate, think critically, and most importantly, create. She's built her program through the middle school and using students there and has contributed her curriculum to some of our programs because of her work. She also coaches girls golf at Schuyler High School. Shanda is absolutely a future ready educator. She's always asking questions, is willing to learn something new and growing in whatever she does. I'm excited to have her on the show today. Welcome, Shanda. Thanks. Glad to be here. Yeah. So we're, we dive right in in these interviews as as you've watched. And what are the three most important things for broadcasting broadcasting and digital media teachers to know when they're starting a program? Um, I'm an educator through and through, so I always go back to start with a standard or start with a skill, and then build from there. And whenever we've talked, I always think about the brand new teachers, the teachers who. Um, It doesn't matter if they're rookies or veteran teachers, just maybe new to digital media to go ahead and start with something that they know that they're already skilled with. And because then when they are skilled with it, um, it builds confidence. And then also one of the really great things about that is allowing them the kids to kind of drive maybe what's next. If you know that they have an interest, take it and fly, you know, take off from that and then it really allows it to become as it should be a a student-centered classroom anyway. And that has worked very, very well for me over and over. And, and year by year, I now have a definite, you know, outline and guideline curriculum of what I teach, but there are times we take serious tangents um, just because one student comments, Oh, I would love this, or I saw this, or I wonder how. And so we learn it together. We figure that out. But, um, I always go back to definitely number one, start with a skill, start with a standard, and then find a way to teach that skill or that standard. It can be a project. It doesn't have to necessarily be a project. It might just be learning how to do it together in class. So that's my number one. And what what was that for you? If you remember, I, I remember your story, but those that don't, when you, if you remember, you walked into York High School and a light bulb went off for you. And I'm assuming there was a skill or something that you knew your st- students needed that they weren't getting that student broadcasting could provide, not only at, at events, but what you've developed in the classroom. Yeah, I'll never forget David, ever. <laughs> um, and Chris Erickson was there too. He was the the sponsor. Give credit where it's due. Um, no, just watching how engaged the kids were with what they were doing. And then the same thing, the engagement in my classes, um, that can be done in any classroom setting, a core class, but digital media lends itself so well to the student engagement factor where kids take on the things that they love. And there's so many different pathways you can take. And so that was the biggest part for us um, was just to, to find what they love. And then the learning just happens. I mean, it's pretty easy. If I get excited about something I want to learn, I will watch, I don't want to say hundreds, but probably hundreds of videos or talk to people or reach out, ask you guys that type of stuff too, when I get passionate about something. And it's the same thing, obviously with kids, no matter what it is. So that is, is the biggest part for us. Yeah. How have you seen from that first experience? I know you work with, um, a lot of students, um, ELA students, if I'm not mistaken, and how have you seen that improve their communication skills, not only from an ELA perspective, but students in general learning how to communicate better because of these broadcasting experiences? I know you have lots of stories, but what's one that rises up to the top uh, when it comes to that? Yeah. 
uh, the sense of belonging to something, not being left out or being an outlier for once you're part of it. The confidence is huge. Um, the ability to take on a challenge, you know, to walk in and not know how to do something, but with a little bit of training and a little bit of belief from me or from others around them that, you know, in our ELA setting or just, you know, like you said, kids in general, um, that what they do matters and that they can be part of a team. I've definitely seen a lot of kids, and it's not even one specific example, but a lot of kids in middle school and high school have a pretty egocentric attitude and they start to figure out that my skills can contribute to the greater good of the we, of what we can do as a team together when we are, you know, doing a, a broadcast or even just a project in class, that the collaboration factor. But man, I just see that belonging and confidence skyrocketing in sh very shy kids or kids who are uncertain of their language abilities, um, kids who maybe like me as a child had a, a language deficiency when it came to a stutter or a speech issue. And here I, you know, for me personally, here I am all these years later, I talk for a living. <laughs> so yeah, a lot. yeah, right. You're teaching. That's, right. that's really important to be able to communicate. Yeah. And then to kind of follow up to just so many soft skills, and this kind of goes to some of the things we've talked about in the past that a lot of what we do now in any job are the soft skills, the communication skills, the presentation skills, how you get your message across effectively um, to show kindness along the way, you know, and, and giving feedback of what you did wasn't bad, but here's something you might want to consider to get better at it. And those are huge, those soft skills. Do you think because of the environment and obviously when you're student broadcasting a game live on the internet, there's a, a sense of, you know, heightened um, intensity, you know, people are listening and things like that. There's that, but also the safe place and environment you created for students in your classroom probably had a part in building up the confidence in students. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I always go back to the word vulnerable, and that's maybe not the best terminology, but that's what it is to show that you can take a risk and be a little bit vulnerable in your learning right in front of everyone. And you're still going to be valued and you're still going to be the great person you've always been. Um, but it just it also gives others a chance to see that it's OK to not fail, but find a way that didn't work, you know, and find new ways to make things work. And so um with anything. It can be digital media. It can be learning to read. It can be multiplication. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, that the, the learning to overcome those challenges in a safe place where you're going to still have my respect, even if you fall flat on your face is so important for everyone. Yeah. And that's, that's learning and you do a really good job of picking those students back up when that does happen and being available. And I think that's, that's really at the core of what we've tried to do and, and why we love working with educators like you is that you have that heart, the empathy and teaching, you know, mindset uh, to be able to pick them back up and say, let's try again. We're going to do this again. And, you know, let's get better at that. A growth mindset for sure is key in any broadcasting digital media program. Like that's really what it's all about is, is growth. Yeah. Well, and that, goes directly with how technology works. It changes so fast. We all know this. It's changing so fast that keeping up is hard. And so if you just allow yourself a little bit of grace, a little bit of time to learn the next skill and the next skill, that is the entire growth mindset. It's going to change. So keeping up may not happen, but what can I do to at least level myself up or level my students up and continuing that process? It doesn't end. You know, this isn't, like I said, I used multiplication earlier, but, um, yeah, I learned that in second grade and I was good. You know, I got it. But I have learned something every single day, literally, as have you and anybody who teaches technology. You have to learn something new every day, tweak something every day. And so when the kids see that, they'll come back when they're working on their projects. And if I have given feedback and I'm at my desk, I'm typically watching something that I just wondered about or a student prompted me. I'm like, let me go find out. It's it's constant. I love that. I love that. How have you observed students transform maybe, you know, their personality coming out a little bit more or someone that's really shy and reserved and they now 
are in, you know, in front of the camera? What does that transformation look like, especially specifically with you at the middle school level, which is a transformational part of their life anyway, right? All sorts of things going on. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, number one, um, and this goes back to, I have to talk about me for a second. I may or may not have gotten detentions in middle school for talking in class. We're all surprised. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> but to be able to channel that and let kids know, I'm going to use this part of your natural personality, and this is how we can use it in this class in a positive way. Um, the kids who aren't great at attending all the time, that, well, this is a pretty engaging class and we're pretty fast paced and we don't sit and take notes for 20 minutes at a time. So that just goes with educational psychology, switch up what you're doing every five to seven minutes. And so we are definitely switching things up every five to seven minutes in here. And so that definitely, you know, kind of follows that path. Um, but for sure to take, like I said, to take where they are, my more soft-spoken students to find what they are good at and encourage them to speak out and let their voice be heard and their ideas be heard. And, um, I'll go over and I've been planted the idea, Hey, when we're going through, um, angles today, and I know that, you know, this, I saw your notes and I saw your online quizzes. I'm going to call on you second. And you can explain whichever of these three angles you want to, but I'm going to call on you a second and get ready. And I will prompt those kids and kind of plant that for, especially my, my ELA kiddos. Um, and so they know it's coming and then I'll say, okay, so-and-so, you know, what can you tell me about when you were shooting angles? And then she goes into this beautiful explanation of um, high angle versus neutral versus a worm's eye or something and makes her the hero that day in class. And I didn't do anything. She had the knowledge. She had the learning. I just didn't, I wanted to remove the barrier of the fear of when is it going to come and will I know the answer? And that way she had, you know, a minute or so to kind of be thinking ahead and doing the thing of translating it from one language into her language, thinking it through and then back out in English again. And wow. so it just takes time. That's, it just takes time with anything. So, you know, little secrets like that, that work very well. Um, but I've, you know, watch, like I said before, too, the confidence in kids be built where by this point of the year, like when we were live streaming, I just started with a whole new set of kids again, January 8th. <laughs> and so we had broadcast to do afterward. And so we had a practice in class, but to watch them by this last ball game, just like show up and sit down and start doing things. And it was the third time one gentleman had ever done it. And another girl, this was her second time. And you know, just to, without me saying a word or a prompt from Mr. Lauk, who is the co-coordinator with me, um, they know that we trust them and mm. we, they know the expectations we have. Like if we say be there at 530, like at 515, they start showing up, <laughs> you know, just those types of things. Um, so they take it the, they take it to heart, the professionalism, they take it to heart that the job that they have is important to be able to have our live streams for families that can't travel you know, to see it. And then they also have the professional side realizing, you know, that if we have 74 people watching, you can bet half of them are from the other town. And so you mm -hmm. had better be respectful um, and understand that even though, of course, we're rooting for our team not to have a blatant bias, you know, yes, and to be complimentary of when you see great plays from both teams. Yeah, I love that. No, and that's really impactful a student to understand that at that age, knowing their surroundings and the professionalism. And that leads into, you know, you essentially answer this next question, but anything else you want to add to it here is what are some of the skills these students are learning that really prepare them for going into the workplace, especially you've got middle school and high school students helping with these broadcasts. Uh, we talked about communication. What are some other things that you're seeing the professionalism that you're seeing because of them creating content and communicating what's really propelling them. And maybe you've got a story of a student who's now been through your program and is in the workforce. Would love for you to share if, if something uh, pops in your head on that. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I, I said before two soft skills, um, having a student be able to walk up and look an adult in the eye, and shake their hand, introduce themselves, carry on a conversation of a professional, take out all of the slang, the vocal fillers, those types of things, and present themselves in a positive light. It's the problem solving, kind of the background of 
this doesn't really phase me because I've faced these types of things before in class or while we were on air and they just have to be able to see we have to keep working and keep moving forward and not give up. The a big one that I've seen that's for lots of kids is they have a hard time communicating their needs and their wants. They don't want to bother an adult or they don't want to feel like, oh, I don't want to ask that because she already said it and I forgot or I'm not quite sure. But to be able to communicate out, could you do that again or could you say that again one more time? I know you explained it, but I didn't quite get it to, to say that and stand up for themselves or to communicate, Mrs. Hall, this is what I need from you. So for a future boss to be able to say it 14 or 17, or they walk into an interview after college or even during college to ask for what they need or what they want. And then also, you know, to let people know around them, this is what I can do and what I am capable of and not being shy when it comes to kind of tooting their own horn kind of thing. Um, Sometimes they've been taught to, you know, be humble. And I teach that too with my own children and my own students, be humble. Um, but there are times too, you have to step forward and say, okay, me over here, look at what I'm doing and look what I can do. And to be able to do that in a graceful and tactful way where it doesn't come out conceited, but it comes out, I'm very capable. And if you give me the opportunity, I will show you how capable I am. Or if you give me the opportunity to level up from here, um, let me prove you right. You know, those types of things. And so that's, that's the beauty of when I put a camera in their hand, you know, even just for stuff we do in class and they're like, she's trusting mm -hmm. me to put a $700 camera in my hand and take it home, you know? And yes, yeah. I sure am. Yeah. Yes. Go create, go get the great content. And when they want to come and use the audio board and they're like, well, can I just go in there? And I'm like, well, do you need me? And they'll say, no, I don't. I'm like, well, then go. <laughs> like, I trust you. You're okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so then that kind of goes on to what students have kind of come through. I have students that are at the University of Nebraska at Lincoln in the journalism program. And, you know, Lucy is her name right now, um, graduated two years ago or last year, rather, just last year. And she told me in seventh grade, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. And I said, well, you know, I love to hear that from you, but there's so many other things you're good at. Let's kind of see. And she did not waver. She even came back and would help out at broadcast the last couple of years when she could. And she was an athlete herself and, you know, busy herself, but she would come back and help if she could. Um, Cheyenne is at the Northeast community college in Norfolk. And she showed up at a football game this year and just said, Hey, do you need help producing? And I'm like, uh, it's yours. Cause she's doing journalism. <laughs> so I watched the football game it. and stood there. <laughs> she ran the show. <laughs> Um, so, you know, some of those things as just a couple of those young ladies, um, there's other students who have gone into their own media production businesses or photography who weren't even necessarily in my classes, but, um, would just come back when they found that love in high school and asked me, um, Oscar is 21 years old. He has his own photography business based out of Grand Island and he shoots high school sports all over, um, for just various teams because he loves it. And he's pretty much self-taught. He occasionally mm -hmm. asked for a little bit of advice here and there, but he was friends with my youngest son. And so he wasn't afraid to come back. Same thing. And just ask, even though I did not teach him one day <laughs> ever. Um, so the relationship side of things too, of, um, and this is not even digital media, but it's just yeah. this, the, even if they've been in class, how many students have said that they got hired at a job and that they were very thankful they had had a digital media or communications class at the middle school level that when they were 16, they could go get the job and knew how to interview. And so I take great pride in that of saying, I hope that one of the things that I've taught in class helped them along that path. Yeah. Oh, love it. I love hearing those stories and I know you have many, many more and those, those are really great examples. And I just, that shows the type of pro program you've built and that kids want to come back and be a part of it. Like that's really special. That's like, you know, I think about on the sports side that alumni want to come back and, you know, to practice and check things out or whatever. That's the same thing in this case, because they know what type of environment and culture that you guys have built. And they know that 
you're going to be totally open to them jumping in and producing a game, right? Uh, that's a testament to what you've done. And, and now Truman, you know, helping you as well. Absolutely. He, he has been fantastic. That's, that might be something that if you've got teachers out there who are doing strive and everything by themselves. And as we know, it's full time. It's every, I don't know what every school's rules are, but um, every home varsity event all year mm -hmm. long, it gets to be a lot. Um, and so I did ask with my administration, can I, I've got to have some help. I can't be at everything anymore. And I'm a varsity coach in the fall too. So fall is right. very challenging. Yep. Um, so yeah, Mr. Lauk Truman, he came along to, to help out and have him all trained up. And again, kind of that younger mind, he's, you know, out of college just a couple of years, but he's super techie and how he's made our broadcast level up and even just some things he suggested, Oh, I want to try this or this looks cool. So then I've come back now in my class after something he said to add it in. Um, so the math teacher can do it too, <laughs> you know? Yes. Okay. I, I couldn't remember what he, what he taught and I should, we should definitely have him on the show as well to get his perspective. And I love that you have a co-sponsor. I wanted to introduce that. That's, that's not on the script here, but I think that's really important as we were talking before we started reco recording, you've got a son who plays college basketball. You've done a hundreds and hundreds of events and bringing along someone so that when you do retire or whatever is next for you, right? You've been teaching for 27 years. You've got someone who has been able to kind of soak in the knowledge and experience what you have and really carry that on. I think that's really, really important if you're watching this to understand, bring someone else along, just like, you know, if you're handing over a business or, or whatever you're doing and you want that legacy to carry on, you've got to train them and bring them up and they add some new things to what you've done and maybe do things a little bit differently. Um, I think that's really, really important. And so if anyone has questions on that, that might be a whole separate training, um, Shanda, that we, that we talk about is, you know, how do you work with a co-sponsor? I know Matt Hinkle has one with Bo at uh, Northwest high school. That's becoming a, a bigger trend. Um, he's also at the high school and you're at the middle school, correct? Yes. And so you're pulling, you know, you're interacting with students. And I think that's really important. I do want you to dive in a little bit on that, that for those educators or administrators watching that, you know, maybe are struggling to get students. That's a, a common problem and are looking towards the middle school. What would you suggest? How, where should they start if they're thinking about middle school students and getting them involved? Obviously they need someone like you to be leading that, but what would you say to that administrator saying, hey, we really want to get some more students, but high school students are too busy. How do we get started with getting middle school students involved? Okay, keep it, keep it simple and keep it easy. Look who's at the games already. If it's a younger sibling, um, I just had two fifth graders that were there at the games anyway, and we were running short on people that night because of other events that were happening grab yeah. the fifth graders. They can do it and they do a great job. And again, they feel valued. You have to watch them, of course, and kind of guide them along. Um, but start with who's there. They already have an interest. They are already invested because their big brother, big sister, cousin, or whomever is playing. And so, you know, talk with the kiddos, talk with their parents and popcorn to bribe them doesn't hurt. <laughs> so um, that's, that's one thing. Um, but honestly, you know, start there. It doesn't have to be your kids who necessarily are your big sports kids. Sometimes I will grab the exact opposite, the kids who aren't involved in athletics at all. Um, I've always said this, find your outliers, find the kids who just need to be needed. And mm -hmm. holy cow, you'll be amazed at, you know, at where we get with that. Um, yeah. Honestly, some of my honoriest kids, not troublemakers, big difference, but some of the honoriest <laughs> kids <laughs> um, that like to have a little bit of fun, their personality will come out if you let them do some mm. color or play by play. Um, but again, the kids who need to be needed, I know I had a couple of kiddos who I know that their parents worked a different shift and their parents weren't home after school till night anyway. They didn't get off till 11 o'clock at night. And so I had a conversation with the parents and said, if if they can get there, like I can't give rides, you know, public school, I can't, can't do that part. But if you can get them there and they can get a ride home, I would love to have them help. And consistently 
I had a brother and sister that were two years apart for years that would show up because parents were working that second shift and they were going to be home alone. So they would wow. much rather have been at the gym helping out or up in the press box at football helping out. So kind of think outside wow. the box who might be yeah. some people. Um, I always say children of staff members because you know, they're going to be there, <laughs> you know, yeah. that type of thing. Um, that is really well done, but definitely. And if you know, as we all know, if you have a super nutso sports kid, they're going to be busy and they sometimes even have to come after their own middle school practice, but you don't have to teach the vocab. They come in and they've got, you know, I had a student just Friday night who made a reference um, to Dennis Rodman because of a hairdo. And I'm like, how do you know Dennis Whoa. Rodman? Like I <laughs> nice. was, yeah. Um, but he's a basketball kid. Like he knows basketball history. And so, nice. yeah. I mean, and he is, he is a way sports kid. He talks with me in the library about sports and basketball all the time and has been for a couple of years, not enrolled in my classes, but love sports. And I'm like, let's go. And so, very cool. yeah. And he's told me flat out, he goes, when I go to high school next year, like I'll still come and help you. Done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is s some of the students that you're getting at the middle school or even fifth grade, which I love, um, aren't necessarily in your broadcast journalism, digital media class, even though that is a place where you're quote unquote recruiting to be a part of that. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're learning some other things, you know, which I, I mentioned at the the top of the show that just a quick plug, Shanda has contributed her curriculum introduction to digital media curriculum inside our digital media education program, which is amazing, but that's not necessarily all those students aren't necessarily helping with the broadcast in the evening, but does expose them to a little bit of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I wherever love that. I them. love that. <laughs> wherever you can find them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is hard for um, administrators to, to think about like, oh, this is another thing that I've got to try to get people to show up for. And so having a champion like you doing that, um, I think is really impactful. And so, um, we always say that teacher, the teacher has, you have to invest in that teacher and support them and, and, uh, allow them a space to get students involved too. So awesome. Shameless uh, or humble, humble, shameless brag, whatever you say here, you know, how has strive, you know, the training and resources support from strive and, and now strive education helped you become and improve as a, an educator in this space in digital media and broadcasting. I could not have done any of this without all of you. No way. Um, I would still be in that back little office pretending with my high ability kids to do a TV show. That's what would be happening um, <laughs> for sure. Now, especially since there are some things in place with curriculum and future ready, it is just an easy place to go and find my next, my next thing I want to learn. Um, my next project to do with kids, um, seeing what other people across the state are doing and watching, you know, if I don't have a game, I get on the strive at home on TV, <laughs> on my, my app and, and hop on the Roku and see what's going on and who's doing what. Um, but the resources are there. That's just it. The, it's such a minimal investment for what you get out for kids. It's pennies on the dollar that you get the investment back for kids. And then my own professional development. Digital media teachers live on an island. You know, you don't go to college and get a major in how to be a digital media educator. And so they have that for math. They have that for science. They have that for history. They have that for if you're K-8 or K-6 or middle level or whatever, but not for digital media instruction. And so that's a gap. And, and the state of Nebraska realizes that. Um, CTE programs, there are definite gaps. And so... What we have now with Future Ready and what we have now with curriculum and what we've had for years now, 10 plus years with Strive and every, all of you there, um, is that connection. And administrators and other teachers know if we have a question, it's not like we're going to some big, huge corporation. Like, mm -hmm. I think I know every single person's name who works at Strive. They, I know their face. If I call, I'm like, hey, this is Shanda and Sky. They're like, oh, hey, like they make time for you. And so... Um, it can be a quick question. It can be, this is what training my kids need. And y'all just come out to the school and train us up as many times as we need. Um, I don't know. 
I just, I'm so grateful, really, honestly, that, and it's not me, it's again, now to the connections with other professionals who are doing the same thing I am. And so the friendships that I've had, you know, since childhood with Tara, you know, I've known her since I was a little girl, um, to now be doing something similar is really cool. And then some of the new friendships that we have, um, that have come about on a professional level because we're strive schools. That's been huge. Um, but again, this doesn't exist. You don't go to college somewhere and say, I'm going to go teach digital media and get a degree in that. So we have to have you. We have to have the connections, the resources, the support. And it's not a shameless brag and it's not, it's, it is <laughs> that thing. Um, it's just, what can I do next and where do I go? And the easy answer is you, you know, just go to Strive. You know, give Danielle a call. She's going to give you the support. Talk to Eric, talk to Taylor, you know, whatever it takes um, and make it happen. Yeah, I love that. Well, thank you for all the work and hours and hours um, you've spent developing things on your own to contribute, you know, to the community. And that's, you know, collaborate is one of our uh, core values at Strive Education, serving, educating. Um, and empowering, right? We we want to empower teachers so that they take the things that we're sharing and collaborating on and they can implement that in the classroom. And then therefore they're empowering students uh, through these, you know, through creating content, through broadcasting, you know, and all the things you said that it's allowing students to be able to experience those real world professional experiences and they're better equipped for this future digital workforce, uh, whatever that looks like, whatever jobs uh, come about from that, that they're equipped. And that's, that's what educators are called to do. And you, you're living that and, and doing that. So thank you for the time, Shanda, and great conversation as always. Um, thank you for everyone watching. We'll leave in the show notes, Shanda's contact information there so you can get a hold of her. Um, as she mentioned in Future Ready Educators, where our curriculum digital media curriculum is located, you can get access to that, uh, get a hold of us and Danielle can show you that. We'd love to, to share that with you. Thanks again, Shanda. You bet.